Oh, this is bloody heavy. <sighs> My rib cage may be being crushed. Hello guys, welcome back to another video. It's the big one today. So we're back working on the 2010 BMW E91 318D that I bought from Birmingham for not a lot of money. Previous owner said he swapped out the clutch on this thing. I don't think he swapped out the clutch. So ever since I bought the car, the clutch has been slipping. Now, is it the clutch? Is it the flywheel that's a problem? Or do we have an oil contamination issue? I don't know, but we're gonna be going in there. We're gonna be removing the gearbox. We have a new clutch set and a new flywheel and all the bolts and all the rest of it to install. So yeah, it's gonna be a big involved task. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm gonna be completely honest. It's not a fun job to do on the floor in your driveway, but we gotta get it done. So yeah, I'm gonna show you exactly what we have to install and then we'll just get into things. So then this is what we are gonna be replacing today. So we have a brand new flywheel, dual mass flywheel, LUK of course. That should be the OEM for this car. All new bolts for the flywheel as well of course. Uh, right here we have a new clutch kit. So of course uh, the clutch disc itself, pressure plate, clutch release bearing and I believe it comes with a new fork as well. Now right here I have some new bolts for the pressure plate and here we have a new spring clip for the fork and a new pin as well. If you're wondering what this is, this is just a clutch alignment tool that my dad made. It should be the correct diameter just so that the clutch goes on centrally. We don't have any alignment issues when we go to put the gearbox back on. And here we just have some uh, manual gearbox oil. I'm going to be dropping the oil and uh, replacing that. It's probably never been serviced before, so I'm going to be doing that. Also going to be doing the rear diff at this same time as well. Okay, so for starters, if you are doing this in your driveway, you want to get the car up as high as possible. So the front wheels, they are on ramps at the moment. The rears, they are on jack stands as high as possible. I think I'm gonna to have to get this car even higher on the front just to allow me access to get the gearbox removed. But what I am gonna do for start is I'm just gonna get rid of all of the engine covers. So the you know main engine cover, get the airbox and everything out of the way. Get all these scuttle panels out of the way just to allow me access if I need to get onto the bow housing bolts at the back of the engine. Now I'm sure it's not completely necessary to be removing all of these covers but I do just want to give us as good of access as possible and also the best light as possible as well because obviously if I have all this removed we'll get more light down in there okay this should all now come away And I can now at least see some of the bow housing bolts and I could get onto them if I needed to from the top as well. Now, let's head underneath the car. Now for starters, you can see that I have removed the full exhaust system, including the downpipe and DPF. I thought this was interesting. Obviously a factory weld. I'm sure there's a reason for that. Now you don't need to remove the downpipe. It is gonna make things a little bit easier in our case. You don't need to remove the downpipe though. Like I said, you just need to remove this bracket that holds the downpipe to the transmission. I would have needed to remove the rest of the exhaust anyway though. And that's because I'm gonna to have to remove the prop shaft. Now I have a couple of options. I could just unbolt it from the back of the gearbox and then split it there in the middle but I kind of don't want to do that because these prop shafts are balanced so rather than splitting it and making sure I put it back in the correct position 
I'm just going to unbolt it from the diff I think I think that'll probably be easier and just drop the whole prop shaft down uh, it's a bit of a mess under here isn't it I think this is engine oil from a previous leak I think that was from the oil filter housing which I've now fixed so yeah good thing though all of the under trays have been ripped off in the past it seems so no under trays to remove into here which makes things a little bit easier okay so three 18 mil bolts and nuts removed from the gearbox side so ignore what I said about removing the whole prop shaft I've just decided to remove half of it if you do want to do that though just make sure you mark it with a paint pen on both sections just so that it goes back in the same position. To be honest, you may even be able to slide the prop shaft up and out without even having to split it. You may, may be able to just remove it and sort of push it up out of the way, but we want to make things as easy as possible for us. Like I said, I'm lying on the floor on my back. There's not much room under here. And if we can remove things out of the way, then we will do so. Next thing I'm gonna unbolt is this transmission support. So looks like one, two, three, four, 13 mil bolts. And then it looks like we have a couple of nuts where the mounts bolt onto the transmission. I'm guessing they're just 30 mil nuts. So we'll get all those removed and then we can get this out of the way. And with that gearbox support now removed, as you can see, the uh, gearbox is pretty wobbly now. It's basically just held in by the bow housing bolts. Now, what I'm gonna do is drain the oil now, and that's because we want as little weight as possible on this thing, because it's gonna be damn heavy. So I'm gonna drain it now. I should get, I don't know, two liters of oil out. Any weight saving is a bonus, really. Uh, and then, of course, I can fill it up once we have the gearbox removed again. Be interesting to see the state of this oil, actually. See if it's ever been changed before. Uh, that's not the worst I've seen. It's actually pretty good for gearbox oil. usually very very black so this has probably been changed before and now that that has finished draining what is next I think I'm gonna get the slave cylinder removed should just be two 30 millimeter nuts and there's two I should just pull out now Yep, there's your slave cylinder removed. Now I've already disconnected this, I think it's the reverse switch there. I've already disconnected that and the wiring, so that is all now loose. It goes around top of the transmission. Oh, I think there's just one more clip holding it in place, is there? I don't know, we can see it once, once we could, once we lower the transmission down. I need to get on to the gear linkage next right, let's disconnect from here finally remove this little securing clip need to keep that safe it should just push through now this gear linkage arm that's that one removed now basically you need to do the same for this upper support arm as well. These are a bit easier. So you just slide this clasp back. So to slide that back and then you can pull this pin out then on either side and there we go. That's the other one removed. That should just push out. That's the gear linkage free. That's this arm removed. 
and then that's the top support arm removed as well. Should be go time, we should be now ready to remove all of the bow housing bolts. So there's a few smaller bolts, a couple we've already removed because that was the uh, DPF bracket or the downpipe bracket. But there is one, two, three, I think just three E10 bolts left and I think the rest are, well they take an E14 socket the rest of them. We're going to see one, two, three, four, five. Mm, yeah, I think I can just see five. So, yeah, I think I'm going to remove all the smaller ones first. And then the ones around the top, they're all the bigger bolts. And I need to kind of brace this as best as possible with my legs because it may just fall at any minute. That's where you have to get creative with the extensions that you use. Don't know how the hell I'm going to get to the one at the top. I may have to do that from the engine bay. That's all of these small bolts removed then. So far so good. Now I think things are going to get tricky. Okay, so onto the final bolt have put a trolley jack just at the front of the transmission just so hopefully it doesn't suddenly fall once I remove this bolt but um, yeah we'll see how things go all right should be all bolts removed there goes. Uh, I think we're off. I think we're off. There's one more plug on the top to disconnect. Ah, uh, I've done it. I've got the connector off. Right. Uh, need to manhandle this transmission off now. Off of the truck. This is bloody heavy. Oh. We're off. My rib cage may be being crushed at the moment. Let's get the wiring out of the way. So, gearbox removed. And bloody hell, that was heavy. All right, let's get it removed from underneath the car. So now that we have the gearbox removed, what do we see? Well, the release bearing is buggered. That is completely just split in half. And I don't know if this is the fork that has failed or the pivot pin, but like it's completely loose on there it doesn't even push on so just as oh it's all just fell off hasn't it yeah i think that's that pin that's actually worn and i guess the fork has worn as well but yeah i don't think this has been replaced recently has it although there's a load of grease around the input shaft. So maybe something has gone on here. I know there's a lot of oil. I'm not sure where this is coming from. But yeah, this pin is definitely worn, this pivot pin. That's why it's always best to replace them whenever you're doing a clutch. But yeah, I mean, surely if someone's been here, been in here recently, the release bearing wouldn't just fail like that, would it? After, I don't know, not many miles. Apparently this was done 50,000 miles ago and it's only done motorway, uh, motorway miles since. Not sure if I believe that. All right, let's have a look at the engine side then. 
So yeah, it's an LUK one, but this could be from factory. Nothing feels particularly loose yet anyway. Let's get the pressure plate off. Oh no, this is gonna be fun. Someone's definitely been in here before. That bolt is half rounded. Need to be careful getting these out. So, managed to get one, two, three bolts removed. Three of them rounded off. Yeah, they were already rounded to be fair. Someone has definitely been in here before and they've used the original bolts. Someone's done a very, very poor job on this clutch. Um, be, I'll be interested to see what's actually failed in here. The hat to guess, they've probably used the original flywheel as well. And maybe that's what the issue was the first time. But I'm gonna have to drill these three bolts out now anyway. Okay, so. As I'm not bothered about damaging the flywheel, I'm just gonna drill the head straight off. So, as you can see, clutch and flywheel now removed, and somebody's definitely been in here before. I think this clutch and flywheel was removed to do the timing chain. I do believe the timing chain has been done now because the sump has been sealed up with some sealant here. So between the timing cover and the sump, you're supposed to put a thin bead of sealant, which, yeah, I can see this is not factory. Um, so it's definitely been done before. And the crank seal is good as well. I can see that's quite fresh. So, yeah, I do think the time and chain kit has been done on this car. You know, what sort of kit it's been replaced with, no idea, but I'm pretty confident that that has been done now. Now this is where things get interesting. So, managed to get the pressure plate off. I had to just drill those three uh, bolt heads off. It was a bit of a nightmare actually. Uh, there's one, there's one, and there's one. Took for took forever to draw them out. They must be like a hardened steel. Um, but yeah, I've noticed the pressure plate. I'm sure that's when it is at full adjustment, so it can't adjust anymore. And looking at the pressure plate, it's very uh, well. It's very glazed for one, but it's also it's like got these ridges in it, like you can feel that with your fingernail. And having a look at the clutch disc itself, like there's still loads of life left in it. I mean, it's not down to the rivets or anything. I was expecting this thing to be in pieces pretty much. But again, it's very glazed. Like it's just usually kind of a, like a rough material, but it's very shiny. And then moving on to the flywheel, it looks quite burnt. And again, you can feel these ridges in it. So I'm not actually sure what has failed here. Could it be the throw out bearing? That's the only thing I can see that's failed. And of course the fork and the pivot pin in there. That's very, very worn. I think there's a good chance that they replace the timing chain, just put the original flywheel back on and then just put the original clutch back on but didn't even think to check the throw out bearing fork all that pivot pin in there because yeah i think this is all original i mean it does kind of make sense the previous owner did do a lot of motorway miles so after 180,000 miles this well could be the original clutch to be honest but it's all getting swapped out now anyway. Okay, so it's now time to begin the installation of the new flywheel. Just gave the engine a good clean up with some brake cleaner. And I have my new flywheel bolts ready. They already have thread locker on, so you don't need to apply any of your own. And there is a dowel on the 
crankshaft, so the flywheel should only go on one way. Saying that, there is two dowel holes on the flywheel, so maybe it can go in either of those. There we go. So I think it's the square hole that is the correct one. The square hole on the back of the flywheel. Let's just give them a quick tighten down. And now we can get all eight bolts torqued down to 120 newton meters. Now, you're probably thinking, well, how do you stop the flywheel from rotating? How do you stop the engine from turning? A couple of ways you can do it. You can either have someone hold the flywheel in place. I mean, good luck doing that when you've got to torque it to 120 newton meters. You can ram a screwdriver or a pry bar into the teeth on the flywheel you know you should be fine doing that but there is a chance you can chip the teeth off the flywheel or what you can do is you can get a flywheel locking pin this is from the timing tool kit and insert it into the slot on the back and that should go into a hole on the flywheel and lock it in place Okay, that's in. I just need to rotate the flywheel now. There we go. Rotated the flywheel all the way around. That's now locked in place. Now I should be able to torque these bolts down nicely. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Ah, oh, that's difficult while you're underneath the car. So yeah, all eight firewall bolts torqued down to 120 newton meters. Now before we get the clutch installed, just gonna give the flywheel a quick clean down just to get any oil or grease off. Now, it's time for the clutch. So, it should say gearbox side or flywheel side. This just says gearbox side. So of course it's got to go on like that. So we'll grab our homemade clutch alignment tool. Just insert it into the clutch. As you can see, it's a tight fitting into the clutch disc. And it should be a tight fitting into the flywheel as well, which it is. So we'll just, make sure it's inserted all the way. There we are. That should be dead central now. And we'll get our pressure plate. Again, just gonna give this a quick clean off just make sure there's no grease on there and we'll slide this over the clutch disc just need to line up the dowels and the bolt holes it will only go on one way obviously if the dowels aren't lining up just keep rotating it until they do there we are so all of the dowels are in place one two and three, so we can get all of our new bolts in place. And now when it comes to torquing down these six pressure plate bolts, there's two different torque settings depending on which type of bolts you have. If you have the 8.8 .8 strength bolts, then I believe it's 25 newton meters. These are the 10.9 strength bolts, so these will be 35 newton meters. Sorry, 34 newton meters these will be. Right then, let's get these torqued down. Mm -hmm. 
And there's one. And there's two. And there's three. Four. Five. And six. Okay, now we can remove this plate here. I believe this just keeps the pressure on the clutch while you are installing it. So I'll get a hex in there, a, an Allen key, should I say, an Allen key bit in there and uh, remove that and then I can remove the clutch alignment tool. So it is a 14 mil Allen bit to remove this plate. There we are. That's it removed. We'll just screw our clutch alignment bolt in and then we can pull the tool out. There we are. Clutch should be perfectly central to the flywheel now. Okay, it's now time to move on to the gearbox. Gave it a good clean out on the inside and on the outside. It was completely covered with oil, so while it's out, may as well spruce things up a little bit. But yeah, we have pretty much everything to install. So I'm gonna start with the pivot pin. I'm just gonna apply a tiny bit of grease to the shaft. So it goes in a little bit easier. I'll have to give that a tap. There we are then, that pin is now fully seated. Now we can get our new fork and get the new spring installed. There we are, spring literally just slides over and sits like that. Now we get the new clutch release bearing installed into the fork. And the way that it goes in, so on all four sides of the release bearing. There is these bigger bits. Basically, you want the smaller bit to go to sit like that, essentially. So, not like that, like that. And we'll just push it in. It should snap into place. It's not like a, a tight fit and it's can be relatively loose in there. And we can slide this over the input shaft, but first, I'm just gonna apply a very small amount of this high temperature grease, a little bit to the spline and a tiny bit to this shaft here as well. You don't wanna go crazy, because, you know, chance side it is gonna fly everywhere, so you don't wanna coat this thing. Just a very, very small, thin layer. That's all you need. You don't want to contaminate the clutch with loads of grease. You do want the release bearing to be moving nicely. And again, put a tiny bit on the spline just to help it go into the clutch a little bit easier. As you can see, very minimal amount on there. You don't want to absolutely cake this thing in grease. Now let's get the fork and release bearing installed. It just slides on over and we push the spring side onto the pivot pin unless this clip is supposed to go in the groove on that pin that would make sense ah uh, yes yeah, so if you squeeze this uh, it should open up that's right okay let's try again that's better Okay, so it seems like it's on there better now. Found it's much easier to install the clip over the ball pin and then slide the fork into the clip. As you can see, it's much better on there now. They obviously didn't do that previously and that's why this thing was just so loose on there. As you can see, fork is coming out nicely. No binding, it's nice and loose on there. Yeah, just the job that. Okay, so I think I'm ready to try and get this gearbox into position. This is gonna be fun. I've also, I've also installed, probably not gonna be able to see from back there, but I've also installed a Kind of like a guide pin 
in replace with one of the bottom bolts. I don't know if that'll help or if it'd be more of a hindrance. I don't know yet. But what I do know is this thing is damn heavy. It's not bad if you're just lifting it off the floor, but when you've got to lift it on top of yourself while lying on the floor, it is quite heavy. All right, let's get in position. Uh, need to get my leg over. Uh, this is not easy. High enough. So, as you can see, gearbox is now back in position. All of the bolts are in. What torque setting have the bolts got to be to? No idea. There's three smaller bolts and there's the rest of the bigger M10 or M12 bolts. I've just torqued them down with the uh, impact ratchet. They're not as critical, you know, as doing the clutch and the flywheel. If they come loose, it just means that your gearbox will fall off. Not the end of the world, right? But no, in all seriousness, um, torque them down if you want. But I don't think I'm, I was going to get a torque wrench in there. So, yeah, didn't decide to do it. But, um, yeah, no idea how I got the gearbox in place. That was so, so painful. So, basically what I'd done was uh, lifted the gearbox to where it was kind of in position. And then I got my trolley jack, slided that underneath the middle of the gearbox. And, um, and then I kind of kept it there, contemplated life for a little bit. And, um, and then just kept trying to lift it up into position, turning the input shaft so it would line up with the clutch. And eventually we got there. When it eventually went in, I was like, oh God. I need to get a bolt in now, so I've got the bolts in, and um, then I'd ha then I could have a little rest. But yeah, it's all in position now. All of the wiring's in the uh, reverse switch, and also the gear position sensor as well. So yeah, it's just going to be a case of getting the slave cylinder back in, two 13 mil bolts, and then we can get all the linkage back on, and then the gearbox mount as well, and then everything else prop shaft and yeah all that good stuff i'm not going to bother showing you because i've just shown you taking it all off and yeah i need to get this done now to be honest so yeah i'm going to crack on and we'll check in with you when we're pretty much done also need to remember to add some oil to this thing as well because obviously we've drained it now so need to forget need to make sure i don't forget to add oil because that wouldn't be good fun would it Okay, so everything back together, obviously prop shaft on, I've installed the downpipe, I haven't put the rest of the exhaust on, I just want to make sure it goes into gear and the clutch operates as it should first before I put the exhaust back on. Um, I've obviously filled up the gearbox, that is now up to the max, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to jump in and uh, put it into gear and see what happens. 
That has turned traction fully off. Right, here goes then. Clutch out. Yes. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Yes. Get in there. Right, let's try reverse. Yes. Get in there. I'm so glad that went smoothly without any hiccups because I really didn't fancy taking that gearbox back off again. That would have just been an absolute nightmare. Right, let's get the rest of the jobs done. Just gonna service the diff while I still have the car up in the air and then we'll put all the trim pieces back and we'll wrap this job up. Ah, I am so happy right now, more so, so glad. I just took this car out for a drive and honestly, it drives amazing. The clutch is like butter. As soon as you lift that clutch pedal off the floor, just a couple of mil, it pulls away. And that annoying judder, that the whole car would shake as soon as you lift it up the clutch pedal, that is now completely gone, which I am over the moon about. Um, yeah, I'm just glad everything's gone back together as it should, everything's gone smoothly. Um, it shifts so much smoother as well. The fact that we've serviced the gearbox, that should make the gear shifts smoother. And um, we've obviously serviced the differential as well, so that should, um, of course, help that out. But yeah, like I said, I'm just so, so glad. I really didn't feel like get, taking that gearbox off again and, and going back in there, so. If you are doing this job yourself, um, take your time, make sure that you are doing everything spot on first time, make sure you're talking, you know, the flywheel and the clutch up and everything um, spot on. Also make sure you use brand new bolts, of course, for them. Um, would I recommend doing this by yourself in your driveway? I mean, I've done it, so it is possible. Um, I don't think I would recommend it though. It's been an absolute nightmare. If you had two people helping you, you know, if you had another person to hold the gearbox while you get bolts in position and stuff like that, it's probably not as difficult, but you know, lying underneath your car with this much room, trying to hold a gearbox with your knees and the potential of it falling in your face and trying to get a bolt in and trying to tighten things up. It's a bit of a nightmare. It's, it would be a hell of a lot easier on a lift with a transmission jack, um, I'm sure. So hopefully in the future we do have that luxury. That is of course the grand plan. Um, but yeah, we got it done anyway. I, I really wasn't looking forward to this job, but I'm so, so glad that it's done now. And to be honest, this car has covered 190,000 miles. So it's probably never, ever going to have a clutch again. I mean, a clutch should last 150,000 miles, at which point this would be on 350,000 miles and it'll be made into baked bean cans by then, I'm sure. So, but yeah, that's this job done anyway. Hopefully you all have enjoyed it. Hopefully it's been easy enough to follow along. Um, I do apologize about camera angles and things like that. I haven't been able to show um, exactly everything. Just bear in mind, I'm working in a very, very tight space. I can barely fit myself under there, let alone uh, a camera and a tripod. But yeah, hopefully you all appreciate it anyway. I want to thank you all for watching. Give this video a like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you have not already done so. I will see you all in that next one.